on this Wednesday night. I'm Dana Alexa. Thanks so much for watching. Now, over the past month, we've seen students from various college campuses ripping down Israeli hostage posters. These kids, they'll do it shamelessly. Some even feel empowered, if you can believe that. But why? That's the question, right? Why would anyone feel empowered by this? These posters, by the way, aren't political by any means. Take a look at this one. This is baby Kafir, Kafir that is. He's now 10 months old. He was nine months old when he was kidnapped from Hamas. He was taken on October 7th from Israel to the Gaza Strip. He's missing, his whereabouts unknown, it says. The poster states that he was, quote, brutally separated from his loved ones by Hamas. That's the gist, all of which is true. Hamas admits this, they've kidnapped people. So what message are these kids sending to the world when you try to erase the brutality of Hamas? Where are those hostages? That's what we wanna know here. I've heard pushback on these posters. Why are they even up in the United States, in London, in France? These kids were taken in Israel. Well, I'll tell you why, because the world needs to know what Hamas is doing and bring awareness to this issue because anti-Semitism is still alive and well, because people are sympathetic to terrorists without fully comprehending what they actually want, what they have pleaded to the world, and what they want to do to Israel and the US. You just have to read their charter. It's a simple Google search. The latest post-ripping phenomenon can be seen in the city of Pittsburgh. Let's take a look. Hello there. Are we taking these down? Yeah. Oh, how come? Why is it propaganda? These people were kidnapped. It's nothing in proportion to the genocide that's happening in Gaza. Is terrorism heroic? Do you know what martyrdom means in Islam? What does it mean? What does it mean? Is terrorism heroism? Can you tell me? Do you think it's heroic to slaughter children and mutilate them? These people think that they're doing something. Well, joining me now, it's political analyst Logan Dubel. Hey, Logan, thanks for joining me tonight. You know, it's really hard to believe these are places we call higher learning. These students at the University of Pittsburgh, like we just saw in that video, they pushed these anti-Israeli uh, ideologies from protests to the removing of these hostage posters on campus. Why? They just genuinely don't care about these hostages. As you mentioned, these aren't political flyers at all. You have conservative and Jewish students nationwide hanging them up to really raise awareness and pray that these people find their way home. A lot of them are Israelis. We also have American hostages. And these pro-Palestinian protesters, as you saw in the videos just played, are taking them down, crumbling them up, laughing, and wearing masks to hide their identity. So it's almost as if they know what they're doing is wrong. And we've had a couple batches of posters torn down at the University of Pittsburgh. As all of this is happening, you have the same protesters doing multiple marches a week. Uh, just recently, there was also a die-in protest where they all played dead on the lawn, demanding for a ceasefire. Uh, while that was happening, I had saw students eating snacks on their phones kind of chatting it up. So they don't really even care about that either. And it's a little bit hypocritical, if you ask me, because you also mentioned in your intro that these students that are tearing down the photos are saying that, why are they even up in this country? As if they're laying on the floor and demanding a ceasefire is going to do anything either. Right. I mean, they're calling for a ceasefire. They're calling for two-state solution, not understanding that Hamas doesn't even want that. They're calling for these things, and then they have the criticisms of just people wanting to raise awareness about where the heck are these Israeli fam families and Americans, for that matter, too. It's not just Israelis. There's a lot more people that were there on October 7th at that rave and other kibbutzes around the border of the Gaza Strip to Israel. We just want to know where they are. That's it. And listen, to that point, too, Logan, it's not like, you know, the people ripping down these posters, they're doing it. They have a political statement to make. No one's stopping them from putting a poster up of uh, their, you know, their humanitarian whatever wants and needs. I mean, they can certainly do that as well, but they're not doing that. This reeks of politics. No, it does. And it's clear that the universities have their side and have picked out who they want to support on these campuses. You have Jewish students, and it's, it isn't even really just Jewish students, but students who want to raise awareness for these hostages, who seem to be the only one to have obstacles with their activism, getting the posters torn down, getting backlash for it. 
And then you have all of these marches and all of these protests and the die-ins, and they don't really seem to get disrupted. And it, again, it's funded by the university, it's supported by the university, and we really need these universities to reverse course and condemn Hamas and support the Jewish students whose lives are actually on risk on our campus. I'm not sure if you or the viewers have seen, but recently there was a Cornell student who threatened to shoot up the dining hall. There was also a Jewish man who was sadly killed at one of the pro-Israel events. Right. So it's clear who is in trouble here and who's in danger. And we don't really seem to see that sort of support or protection for these people. Yeah, no, not at all. It doesn't pale in comparison whatsoever. So, Logan, you attend um, a university in Pennsylvania and, and, you know, you have buddies at neighboring colleges. So, you know, you attend some events and you go places here and there and, you, you know, you're interacting with college students on a daily basis. We know where colleges lean, mostly left. Um, but when you're talking about the university, have you seen any response from them on this matter of posters being ripped down? Have they have they mentioned anything, any public statement regarding um, maybe even Jewish students, if they feel safe at all, how they have addressed this issue whatsoever? Regarding to the statements, I have not seen the University of Pittsburgh release a statement condemning the tearing down of the posters. I know when this conflict initially started, there was kind of a neutral statement that was released, and after the Jewish community voice their concern for this uh, the statement that was released they re-released one uh, condemning Hamas so that was a little bit surprising to see okay. but regarding the posters we really haven't seen much come from the university and this does make Jewish students on this campus feel a little uneasy I, I do want to give a lot of props to Sophia Rubin who was the one who was uh, confronting these protesters and filming these videos she is making it a mission of hers to not only expose what's going on, but to identify these students and make sure that action is taken against them by the university, because this obviously is anti-Semitic and this needs to be taken seriously. Yeah, there should be a zero tolerance policy for terrorism, you know, just like plain and simple, right? But props to her, kudos to her. I love the videos, love how she calls them out. A lot of them, like you said, Logan, they try to cover up their faces and, uh, you know, put on a mask to, to hide their identity. Well, it's not gonna happen anymore. Now that we have the journalists actually on the field right there, anyone right now with a phone taking video of this firsthand, to me, they're just journalists. They are they're they're journalists, excuse me. They're doing the, the very basis of journalism. So I like to see that and, and I hope uh, we see more people like that along the college campuses. But let's move to tonight's debate from Miami. Each candidate, all five of them were able to weigh in about the war overseas. Um, and, uh, you know, Biden's response and the question of a ceasefire, is it even moral? Uh, so who do you think came out on top with the Israel-Hamas war questioning? So I think each candidate had a little bit to add to this topic. The Vivek Ramaswamy, I think, did a great job with saying, yes, we need to condemn this, but we also can't be making this an anti-free speech thing. So when we have these pro-Palestinian uh, you know, convenings on campus. We can't be threatening to get these students in trouble. Uh, we need to be focusing on the violent ones, the ones who are openly pro-Hamas. So I did like that he spoke a little bit about that. But I think Ron DeSantis did the best job during his time to speak. He not only condemned Hamas, but he stated that he was pro-Israel. And he said that a ceasefire isn't really an option right now. Uh, there, there was a ceasefire. It was broken by Hamas on the day of that festival. And in my opinion, and in the opinion of many students and civilians nationwide, Israel has every right to defend itself, and that's what needs to happen here. Hamas needs to be eliminated. And anyone who disagrees with that, it's, it's, it's a little bit concerning to me, for sure. Yeah, where do you think, where, I mean, the candidates are tonight? So we see Nikki Haley. She's someone that's growing a lot of support. She she gained 10 points just from August alone to now. So that's, you know, those are astonishing numbers for her. She's right now neck and neck with Governor DeSantis. But you have this big, you know, absence of Trump. And that's a person that they're all going to, of course, bash on his record while he's not there to try and gain momentum. Is it important even that Trump attends these events? I mean, right now, does it even matter? He has such a commanding lead. What's your take? I think it does matter because he's running along with the other candidates. And I think that the American people and all voters from each side of the aisle deserve to hear him. I, I don't want to say go to head, head to head with the other candidates, but prove that he is more worthy to be this nominee than people like DeSantis and Ramaswamy and Nikki. 
Uh, and it's very important that he proves himself to these people. And him not attending is very telling. Uh, he has many rallies, draws a lot of people, and he says that he has a good track record. Why not attend the debate and, you know, prove that? But instead, he's doing his own thing. Uh, I'm kind of ready for there to be a new nominee. I think Trump's done a lot of great things. I have voted for him in the past, but him refusing to attend these debates and the name calling and all of this really is very telling of what the, uh, you know, the Trump ticket has turned into. So, I mean, he does have another shot. Hopefully he changes it. But as of now, it's not looking too promising. All right. Well, that's an interesting take, one we don't hear often. So, um, yeah, we'll run with that. <laughs> Logan Dubel uh, reporting from Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now, 